Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good morning, everyone in our stream. I hope and hope you are not sick, as everyone is sick in these days. And uh, I'm happy to welcome you here in the Czech and the Prague Innovation Center. It's a beautiful space in the real center of Prague. So we are very happy to be here. Uh, our today even is a part of a meeting of partners of international project Women, Families and Careers, Digital Solution in Adult Learning, founded by the European Union. The project aims, among other things, to help lifelong learning, especially for women and families, in the form of informal learning through the use of digital applications. Thanks to the close cooperation of four partners from three European countries, who are here, <laughs> a unique collection of digital applications will be created together with a guide to their use. And representatives of the partner organization will speak here today, so we will learn about their approach to the project and all information. Coffee is on the left side, which is important information. If you will have a questions, we will be happy to answer it at the end of the session uh, during the discussion. And because we would like to be on time, I would like to begin this event with inviting Lenka Šťastná, who is the founder and president of Business Professional Women Czech Republic the organization that focuses on the support and development of women in business and professional life. Many of you know Lenka. Uh, who doesn't know Lenka should know that she is very good uh, networker. She is famous for her ability to create and promote projects that support and empower women in various fields. And we all call her queen of networking. So, Lenka, please. Floor is yours. Thank you. Um, it was uh, very nice. And, uh, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. So, I thought that we will have more gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> so, sorry, sorry to go. Uh, it is an honor to stand here today and have uh, the opportunity to speak about a topic that is critically important for our society and uh, economy. The in involvement of women in the web of information technology. We face a paradoxical situation. On one hand, we live in a world uh, increasingly digital where technology shapes every aspect of our lives. But on the other hand, in the Czech Republic, we are struggling with a significant lack of women in the IT sector. According uh, to the 2030 digital decade document made by EU, we have the lowest share of uh, women in ICT specialist positions. In the entire European Union, Union only 10.9%, while EU average is 18.9%, so we are on the half. Uh, this situation is alarming not only for a gender equality perspective, but also in terms of the efficient use of human resources and uh, the innovative potential that women can bring to the IT sector. Moreover, while the Czech Republic is ab above the EU average in number of uh, internet users, we have 86% compared to 74% in EU, EU. We still face the challenge of a low level of fixed uh, internet connection we have 63% of the population not having this connection. And the average in EU is 44%. So it's not half, but it's a lot. We are also lagging in areas such as e-health and uh, the digitalization of uh, public administration, indicating the need for a deeper and broader approach of the digitalization. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, despite these challenges, I believe we stand before a tremendous opportunity, an opportunity to, to bridge the inequalities and create an environment uh, where women not only gain access to the technological education and careers, but also actively shape the digital future of our country. Our goals should include not only increasing the number, but also of women, women also supporting innovations and digitalization in various sectors, including small and medium-sized enterprise. I was very surprised that only 68% of small enterprises start started with digitalization. So they are above uh, EU average again. It is essential to unite forces government, academic, private sector, and individuals themselves to build an inclusive and innovative digital ecosystem together. So thank you for your attention, and I hope this discussion will be very helpful to, to this topic. Thank you for your attention, Linda. <laughs> thank you for your speech. Next one will be online presentation because we are living in the IT world, so we are able to have a work highlight event and we can welcome even people who are not present here, which is great. Of course, it's better to be here, but on the other side, we are happy to welcome Andrea Ferenci, who is president of Association for Women Career Development in Hungary. She has 30 years of experience in the fields of women empowerment and career development. This association was founded in 2003 and by now is a leading professional Hungarian non-governmental organization with over 70 members. And Andrea prepared for us her speech together with Ildiko Modane Gergeni, who is head of research in this association. So let's try the <coughs> technology. Good morning, Frank. I would like to create our partners and all participants of this biological conference titled Education Without Women, Bridging the Gender Gap in IT. This uh, conference is organized within the framework of our Erasmus Plus North Air Partnership Project, Women Family Careers. This is the solution to the dark learning. <clears throat> Why we have chosen the title of our presentation? First uh, participation and uh, cooperation and our participation is done. It's hard to see that with our experiences we can contribute to the successful, successful implementation of our Erasmus Plus project and get new ideas for future projects together with the field of digitalization and women, of course. <clears throat> I would like to introduce my colleague. This is really Komodani Gerdini, who is head of research in our organization. I am Andrew Ferenci, the president of the Association for Women's Career Development in Hungary. Uh, I would like to talk about uh, these topics in my presentation. First of all, I would like to introduce the Association for Women's Career Development in Hungary. We celebrated 20th anniversary <clears throat> in this week, and it has set itself a goal of recognizing, understanding, fostering, and honoring many for women's career development in the family and beyond. We have women <clears throat> find career opportunities by providing information, advice, and training. <clears throat> So that we can use knowledge there and female values that specific to them can make meaningful contributions to the business, academics, and also to its class. <clears throat> they are a family benefit, non profit civil society organization, in person, <clears throat> our objectives to look to adopt new positive policies. Best practices with the idea that we work by at the same time. We present the practices abroad 
This is a recognition which has occurred in enhanced and unborn efforts to foster and bring changes in the field of women's equality, women's rights, women's STEM and ICT, sustainability, and democratic change worldwide, to which we continue to be wholeheartedly committed. We are a think tank organization with about 75 members. Our strength is in the cooperation of generations, the voluntary contribution of our professional members, and our well established strategic partnership. Here I would like to mention our partnership is the business and professional team since 2019, and I would like to thank them for the invitation to this uh, uh, conference. So we met in, uh, in Tuzla that time. Uh, um, <clears throat> the coordinator of the Visegrad Plus uh, project was the NGO Radio Chameleon from Bosnia Herzegovina, and we organized an international women's festival. And we were invited together, and since then, we have uh, implemented two successful Visegrad Plus projects. And we are again together in the current Plus region. The uh, <clears throat> research projects are so important for us because, uh, however, we are an NGO. We think that uh, if we are involved in research projects, uh, we can uh, really take care of the utilization of the results in practical life, and because we are in connection <clears throat> with the HR leaders in the corporation, we really can use the funding of our research activities. We started in 2009, when we initiated uh, the best purpose for women competition and prize research. Successful initiative <clears throat> launched in honor of equal opportunities for a European year. The competition is open to organizations, small and, <clears throat> and the bigger organization. And the aspects of the evaluation are working arrangements, can need opportunities, promotion opportunities to, to preserve health and well-being skill development opportunities, reconciliation, work, private, and family life, and employment of 50 plus women. Since uh, 2007, we have carried out service in connection with this <coughs> competition among employers and employees, and we have a special database regarding women's employment and women's well-being which is available as a representative sample based on the opinion of more than 24,000 questionnaires. This is the website of, uh, of this uh, competition and why. Uh, on Friday, the 1st of uh, December, at the end of this week, we will uh, celebrate uh, the winners of, uh, of the last uh, competition. So it will be a great event. For us, <clears throat> and we will celebrate together with them our anniversary, 20 years of anniversary. About the uh, EU projects, we, <clears throat> we started uh, to work on adult learning projects in uh, 2013. And our latest project is uh, this uh, Women's Family Studies Digital Solution Adult Learning. We are together with uh, with uh, our uh, uh, Czech and Slovak partners, and uh, we are we really miss them, but uh, we can be together personally. But earlier, we uh, carried out a 
the project, which was the bigger change was the title, it was boosting entrepreneurship through international exchange. And this was also an Erasmus, it's the Digit Partnership Project. We learned a lot because we were uh, responsible for the research and dissemination task. And the North went uh, 10 years ago, it was a drama project that was still in a, a group project. <clears throat> On order people remember this group. Uh, the, the project uh, was sponsored by the Visegrad one. We have carried out two projects, as mentioned, because we were together in uh, with the, the professional the business and professional women from Czechia, and uh, uh, we were the coordinator uh, of the organization of this project. Uh, the second one was uh, finished last year. It was uh, about the uh, really very serious <clears throat> effects of the pandemic on work life balance in the Vision Lab countries. Uh, we had the conference uh, last year in Budapest in high performance, and we uh, referred a research study uh, which included recommendations for decision makers. You can find detailed information about this and about the previous project <clears throat> on the website of the Vision Lab .net. Uh, We cannot, uh, we always have to mention the EU digital decade. Uh, we are uh, in this decade now, and why it is important for us uh, European uh, uh, Union members, because this Europe's digital decade uh, set the targets for 2030, and these uh, targets are that to empower the business and, and people, businesses and people in a human sense, sustainable and more prosperous digital future. So whenever we work, uh, our research is in the field of uh, digitalization. We have to start the targets of uh, this uh, of the digital decade, uh, which we together with our partners in the current Erasmus Plus project discussed in details. So in uh, within the framework of the digital decade, uh, country reports have to be submitted to the European Commission. And uh, these country reports outline how each member state is doing regarding the digital security criteria for uh, points, which is digital skills, digital infrastructure, digitalization of businesses and public services. Here you find <clears throat> the whole report. The country report, uh, as mentioned, has to be submitted every year. And uh, they are structured according to the Digital Economy and Society Index, in DESI, which is the base of everything. It's about this uh, contains introduction, digital skills, at least basic digital skills uh, at the level of individuals. Then I, I city, specialist employment, digital infrastructure, digitalization of businesses, digitalization of public services. Uh, we have studied uh, the country reports of uh, the three member states who are involved in the current Erasmus Plus project, which is Czechia, Czechia uh, Slovakia, and Hungary. So, starting with Czechia, uh, they have made significant efforts in 2022 to enhance digital skills. But those efforts are not yet fully reflected in the indicators. At the same time, Czechia can be proud of the results because they are above uh, at the, the, the basic digital skills about the European level. And uh, uh, they have they did even better after this. Uh, after many uh, efforts as in uh, 2022. About uh, Slovakia, they score slightly better than the average 
when I do the basic thing, digital skills, but you know, the, the average are uh, the basic digital skills. Uh, the Hungarians uh, cannot be so proud of our uh, results because they scored uh, below the EU average of the competitors. But we hope that uh, the new national digitalization strategy until 2030 <clears throat> will acknowledge that improvements in digital skills at, at all levels uh, will be as, uh, are essential to enable the digitalization of businesses and public sector. So we hope that, uh, that this strategy will have uh, the uh, required development. So we are implementing several measures related to the digital skills, especially to provide the necessary digital tools as well as network infrastructure and services. Uh, what we mentioned about uh, each country, we have taken for the evaluation of the country reports. Uh, our participating in course, it's, uh, it's very interesting because in the scientific cooperations, this is uh, the abbreviation, the European Cooperation in Science and Technology. So there are really very few NGOs uh, participating, mainly for the scientific sphere, for the academia. Uh, we have been involved since uh, 2020, and uh, by so, <clears throat> practically through our references and the uh, business career for a lifetime program. So, this is an awareness program which we started in 2009 because uh, women's career development is an important issue for us, and we have noticed that very few people and research deal with the women over 50, uh, women over 50, a very important in the families and in the labor market. And therefore, uh, <clears throat> we have achieved quite a name on international level through this program. We have had many uh, presentations in the European Union and uh, in the United Nations. So through this uh, learning experience is an international network, we uh, can participate in international operations. Uh, our task as an NGO, we represent the gender dimension um, coordination, target groups and stakeholders. We can uh, carry out country reports and comparisons, disseminations to our Hungarian international collaborations in the USU. And uh, as mentioned earlier, it's very important for us how we utilize uh, the research results. We can really do it with, uh, within our networks in Hungary. We have really uh, Asian people of the, of the people. At the moment, so I have to mention that there are really, it's a trend in, uh, in the third market that they deal with the uh, other people and digitalization and labor market issues. This is a very, very trendy issue at the moment. And therefore, <clears throat> earlier it was not so, they were not so interesting, but recently we have found four cost actions. So the, the first projects are at the four actions. Recently, we found the four actions which deal with older people and their labor market issues and digitalization is always very important in these four first actions. For the time being, we work in two actively and there are new actions which are practically starting right now. Uh, first of all, we would like to, in this presentation, I would like to talk about uh, the work in later life uh, redefined by digitalization. The name of this uh, action is Diginat. So this Diginat is uh, 
uh, uh, the, the research uh, is uh, going on in five working groups and uh, the management committees. We are involved in uh, all working groups and uh, also in the MC. <clears throat> I am a member of the, uh, of the uh, management committee. This is uh, a picture of our meeting. Uh, country reports are uh, prepared uh, during this first action it is taken up in the working group. So it's very important that we identify in which group and according to which aspect and uh, aspects. These country reports are preferred. There are many, many country reports. Even within this course action, uh, each uh, working group started several uh, started uh, uh, country reports according to different aspects. But uh, our this one is uh, we think the best, and the structure of the country is. Profile report is very interesting and very detailed, and it's very, very close to our uh, goals. Therefore, I am personally, uh, I am very happy that I personally can uh, participate in the research work in the working group two within this uh, uh, post action. And our goal is digitalization and age culture in organization. And uh, to carry out research in this field, the uh, leader of this working group is Professor Matt Flynn from the University of Leicester, who has initiated the country profile research in our working group, focusing on digital technology training and development and age management of older workers. And uh, he also set uh, the, the structure. Which is here introduction impact <clears throat> employers, employers and uh, unions and employer best practice and inclusion. Uh, this kind of country reports are carried out on a volunteer basis, and uh, the countries who participate uh, they started with a with a summary with just uh, the main findings. Which uh, are uh, the computer uh, in a country, uh, the computers, skill match, training, biggest challenges, businesses affected, employer responses, trade union responses, and the good practice. So it's a very short summary. Uh, it's practically one slide, and several countries prepared it already, including Hungary, and this is the Hungary report. The summary of the Hungary report. You can find this information uh, after uh, my presentation will be published. So, uh, <clears throat> we set some conclusions. Uh, we, uh, we started with the EU country reports and the post action, picking up the working group two country reports, and uh, we compared them. And, uh, uh, I would like to report about the conclusions. So, regarding the EU country reports, uh, the 16 to uh, 74 age group includes only one total of data related to digitalization of the EU member countries. Specific data on older workers is not available. The country reports on EU member states have a uniform perspective with a macro approach. The digital country profile reports uh, within the work group two, uh, with a, they are uh, with a special aspect, uh, include uh, uh, in the introduction the data specific to the country. The characterization of the enterprises, the attitude of the trade union, and good practices. So, this is the plus. And uh, this uh, country profile highlights in more details where greater attention 
should be faced to equal opportunities and the problems. And what are common in uh, both uh, approaches, both are based on DESI. And however, uh, for example, UK is not uh, part of the European Union, DESI is uh, used in a wider uh, range than only the European Union countries. We can say that uh, the reports can be adopted separately and present the given country independently. They can be connected to each other based on the data of the reports, certain analysis and research can be prepared according to the specific purpose. Um, as mentioned at the beginning, it's uh, very important for us that uh, we exchange our experiences in on our other uh, research projects. The country reports are uh, especially important in the field of digitalization. There are country reports made according to several aspects by several <clears throat> resources and organizations. And we are sure that uh, all experience together with the team from our current Erasmus Plus project that we collect uh, applications from our countries, from the Richard Duff countries, who have uh, the everyday life of uh, the women and families, both in the family and the labor market. We together can uh, really utilize uh, and exchange our experiences and to several researches. This is uh, about our major projects in the 20 years, so I'm very proud of them. <clears throat> I would like to thank for your attention, also in the name of Yudiko Mudrani Gurdini, you find here our email and our website. Goodbye. Andrea, thank you very much. And our next, next guest is from Hungary as well. Yeah. Let me welcome Dr. Agnes Romikovac, who is the managing director of the Family Friendly Hungary Center which is directly helping from families via sharing of knowledge about creating homes, raising children, learning, healthy living, and strengthening commitment to family life. And Agnes will talk about the situation on the Hungarian labor market. Whether it's working or not, it is working. <laughs> Thank you very much for having us here. Uh, we are really thankful for this opportunity, for your hospitality, and especially of the snow, <laughs> which we rarely have in Hungary anymore. So thank you. Uh, first, I would like to talk about uh, the Family Friendly Hungary Center, just two slides, just to let you know what we are working on. And then I'm going to introduce uh, some interesting findings of, our, findings of our latest research. So the main role of the Family Friendly Hungary Center is to support Hungary, uh, to turn into a family-friendly country and also to enhance and reinforce the country's already existing family-friendly attitude. Because we strongly believe that young adults should have the family that they dream of and uh, then they should be able to maintain a healthy work-life balance and when they reach older age, they should go on and uh, enjoy a meaningful life at that period. Uh, and now we will uh, talk about our latest research that we have published actually just two days ago, and it's a very extensive work. We have worked on it for a, uh, for a couple of years, actually. Uh, the paper is nearly 200 pages long. Unfortunately, it's only in Hungarian. You can freely download it, but only in Hungarian. Uh, so you are the lucky ones who can hear about it in English <laughs> for the first time. Uh, we... The Family Friendly Hungary Center uh, started to plan this research actually quite a few years ago. At that time, we had no idea of COVID coming. 
So we were only uh, focusing on the Hungarian labor market, the trends on the Hungarian labor market, and especially on atypical forms of employment. Because as I told you, uh, our organization supports uh, maintaining a healthy work-life balance. And we believe that a healthy work-life balance is actually uh, very important. Uh, that a healthy work-life balance can maintain through uh, the you know, employees who are flexible. And we wanted to look at that trend, uh, at those trends. Uh, this is just a side note that the Family Friendly Hungary has a certification program for family friendly workplaces. Uh, there are more than 2000 companies uh, participating in that. And through that program, we are in connection with more than 300,000 employees. So these are all coming together. And uh, meanwhile, COVID hit Hungary and uh, digitalization, which was uh, in itself a phenomenon, uh, gained a new momentum. And we redesigned our uh, research a little bit to include uh, digitalization as aspects. So that's how we looked at uh, the Hungarian labor market. Uh, the data was recorded, collected between October 2022 and February 2023. Uh, the sample was representative, and uh, we also uh, we included both employees and employers. Uh, the employee database uh, was uh, quantitative and qualitative uh, as well. So the quantitative part uh, was uh, included more than uh, 1,100 uh, employees uh, on different types of levels in the company, so subordinate managers and so forth. Uh, the qualitative part was uh, uh, interviews, telephone interviews with 31 respondents. So let's look at the first question. First, we asked, uh, we had several questions, but these are the ones that I would like to concentrate on now. So we asked uh, whether there has been any changes in their workplace due to COVID-19. So we only concentrated on the changes, whether something has changed due to COVID-19. And what we had found is that uh, the change was not as extensive as we would have thought. So, for example, only 13% of the respondents said that they had more options for home office than before. And uh, the biggest change was in part-time employment. So that increased the most among our respondents, nearly 23%. And the third uh, most popular option was reduced working hours. So this is how it's changed in Hungary in the COVID. And this slide for me was the most interesting one. Uh, we concentrated on working from home and Actually, uh, what we thought would be the findings of our uh, research is that uh, there would be a huge change regarding home office employment in Hungary. And that is not what uh, the survey has presented to us. Uh, let me show you the first line. Uh, the question was, have you worked from home? And before COVID, 95% uh, of the respondents said that they did not usually work from home. During COVID, this had a little bit uh, changed, but uh, what's most important or interesting to me is that uh, now the levels are back to uh, the time before COVID. So COVID caused a little bit uh, of a more uh, home office-based uh, working environment in Hungary, but let's say that by now we have returned to normal. Uh, we also wanted to find out uh, what were the positive aspects for those who work from home. On average, uh, our respondents save 44 minutes of transportation time, which then they uh, spent on three main things, either time with their family, uh, you could check more options, so not just one, uh, time on themselves, and some work, <laughs> which is not very surprising. Uh, and a lot of uh, respondents said that they found that online um, consultations, uh, online meetings are not uh, less effective than in personal ones. Uh, we all have our own experiences regarding that, so we can all uh, decide for ourselves whether we agree on that or not. Uh, also, 
we one interesting result was uh, that everyone is kind of satisfied with the with the work, way they work right now. So those who work from home more are satisfied with that, and those who don't are actually satisfied with that as well. Uh, it was a very interesting result for me, actually. Uh, those who uh, say they reported working more from home uh, say that they see it as an opportunity. Uh, they do not experience that they, their time is fragmented and uh, they don't feel that their employer wants to control them more than when they are in the actual physical workplace. Uh, those who do not work in home office said that uh, maybe their industry is not ideal for working from home. For example, they work in manufacturing or commerce uh, or their employer is not so much dedicated to not attend this based work. And um, sometimes they themselves feel that they are more effective in a work environment. I, I, I have personally talked to employees who say that they want to come into the office and they want to work from that. And some said that this was due to bad experiences during the COVID. So it's an interesting finding as well. Uh, we found, we looked at different topics and all of them had both advantages and disadvantages regarding home office. So for example, uh, if you look at mental health, uh, people who work from home say that they experience lower stress levels and they uh, don't have so much disturbing stimuli, but also they feel isolated, which is not a surprise. So these are interconnected. Um, we also, as I told you, we also looked at the digital revolution that we are exper experiencing right now. So we were asked the employees uh, how much uh, digital, new digital technologies are present in their companies and it's a very sad and surprising factor, but in line with what Andrea was actually talking about, 69% uh, of the respondents reported that they do not uh, actually use new types of technologies in their workplace. Uh, we asked them to rate their own digital competencies on a scale from one to nine, one being the lowest and five being the expert uh, level. And they self-reported between three and four. So they were not, they didn't feel that they were excellent, but they didn't feel that they were useless either. And uh, the next question is also interesting. We asked them whether they feel that their work can be replaced by new technologies. And actually nearly 40, uh, nearly 84% of the respondents said that no, they don't think they can be replaced by new technologies. Uh, let's look at the other side, uh, the employers. Uh, the data was collected in the same time period. It was also representative. The database was nearly the same, uh, about uh, 1,100 respondents and the same number of telephone interviews. And we uh, had interviews with both uh, CEOs and HR manager level. So, not very surprisingly, based on what I have talked about already, uh, employers do not favor home office employment that much in Hungary, according to our findings. Uh, that was one very interesting uh, um, question to which they replied, uh, they do not find anything. Uh, most, uh, almost half of the respondents said that there's nothing positive they can say about home office which is a surprise, <laughs> not even one thing. Uh, but what we also found out is that there's like a form of uh, non-institutionalized -institutional home office. So when somebody has to uh, skip a day from the uh, physical uh, working environment and uh, because the plumber is coming and they want to work from home, that's okay. Or if they have to leave earlier for a PTA meeting or a doctor's appointment, then they can leave earlier and then they can make up for the time at home later. So uh, it's not uh, written in the rules or in the contract, but some kind of, some form of uh, actually atypical employment is there and present and flexibility. Uh, what about the digital revolution from the side of the employers? Uh, 
it's not surprising from based on what we have already discussed uh, new technologies are not very much used as the employee employers see uh, either and what is more surprising to me they are not even planning to use them to introduce them until 2030 there were several factors that they uh, named why they don't plan to more extensively focus on this uh, the main reason was lack of resources either uh, lack of money or lack of time. So lack of resources was the, was the most important factor. 25% uh, of the firms reported some kind of uh, introduced introduction of uh, digital technologies, new dig digital technologies. And 30% of the respondents said that they expect both uh, positive and negative uh, <coughs> trends uh, developments uh, due to uh, the digital revolution. 30 to 40 percent of current jobs, uh, according to their view, are going to disappear and some new jobs are going to emerge. And 34 percent of the respondents were explicitly pessimistic uh, regarding this field, and only 15 percent were explicitly <coughs> optimistic. Uh, so I'm going to summarize. Uh, my presentation now. Uh, co COVID-19 has not uh, introduced a significant change in the home office phenomenon in Hungary, uh, but those who actually use it or still or continue to use it do not report any long-term negative effects. Uh, regarding digitalization, uh, as I told you, Hungarian firms do not uh, plan to invest uh, large amounts in or time into this area leading up to 2030. And uh, they do not think that digital uh, technology is going to replace the employees very soon. So thank you very much for your attention. Okay, so if you have any questions yes, right yeah. now. I think this is really interesting topic. <laughs> the, okay, the result is a little bit surprising. So yes. may I ask? Yeah. May I ask? Yeah. Do you have any comparison to the European data or to similar research made in other countries? Actually, that's the uh, last uh, step that we are uh, planning to do and that we can do. Uh, right now, we are happy to have this uh, uh, our own results from time, and I think uh, the next step is going to be to look at the uh, at how we fit into the international trend. So that's what we are planning actually. We have time for questions from the audience. Okay. I want to add that the first part of the survey, which I tell that I'm very surprised by the state uh, of digitization in Hungary. I was, I didn't know that they could be such different, I don't want to say such bad, but such different. And the first part was done with the women or in general? With the no, 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 in general, general. general. No, so not, not women, but in, uh, for, as I told you, uh, the database was representative and we didn't concentrate on women or men. We concentrated on the whole labor market, employees and employers as well. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It was really interesting. Maybe one more question. Can we use your results from the presentation <laughs> yeah, for, yes, for our yes, communication? Yes, yeah. yeah, so yes, yes, you can if, perfect. So <laughs> if anyone is interested in the presentation, we can send it to you and we will use it in the communication because it's quite interesting, interesting research. Thank you very much. And so it's not nice. We are not behind the schedule. <laughs> Surprising, right? <laughs> yes. So we have we are ten minutes in front of the schedule, so we can have a short coffee. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> so coffee on the left side. Enjoy the coffee and see you here. I will go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Continue with our presentation. It's my great honor to invite our next speaker, who is Katarina Schmidová. She is team lead innovation at the CSOB. This is a big Czech bank. She's an experienced professional with which work 
background in the field of innovation and banking. Now she has responsibility for end-to-end -end project delivery, including marketing and application management. But before she was responsible for the project to Kapsi, her baby, and she will tell us a lot about this project. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much. Um, I will tell you something about uh, Bern Banking and our application uh, look up say so uh, Build Banking, it's a, uh, I think in this time it's a magical word because everyone wants to use it in a uh, bank sector. And what's Bion Banking? Uh, Right now, it's a trend that is a direct result of uh, ongoing digitalization that has affected the banking sector. Uh, we also offer customers financial products and services beyond traditional ones. It's also a service provided by, by a bank that goes beyond a normal financial services. And it's uh, linked uh, to uh, situations we face in everyday life. Uh, there are two positions in which uh, the bank uh, may be in. The first one is a bank as a platform. Uh, services created independently of us or with our partners. Uh, and uh, these uh, services are available in our distribution channels and CSOB acts as a platform here. For example, Dukapsi uh, or Chesobe loyalty programs with Union. Uh, the uh, second position is bank as a service. The service is created directly by the bank and uh, distributed through partner distribution channels. For example, in Chesobe uh, is uh, bank, uh, bank identity or skip pay or uh, maybe someone know uh, Igloo. Uh, it's important for us uh, that services must be uh, meet at least one of the conditions. Save time or save money. In any case, uh, the services must be in safe environment. It's very important for us. Checks and bill banking. Uh, bill banking, uh, how to translate in check? We don't have the right equivalent. Uh, if we speak about beyond banking, we say it's more than banking. <laughs> Very easy. <laughs> uh, we had a survey done and uh, one of these questions was, uh, do you use any other mobile applications for uh, example, uh, energy providers or insurance companies? 69% uh, of uh, target group uh, tell us that they are users of other applications. If you can see the age gap uh, where the use the most uh, applications were uh, 30 to 45, uh, 44, sorry. <laughs> the second question was, uh, how important uh, are the following factors for you when using non-banking services via mobile app? As you can see, for everyone, it's very important that their personal data are in safe environment. The provider is trustworthy and the mobile app is very easy to use. And very interesting thing yeah. is that uh, people don't need to have uh, innovative uh, service or innovative uh, mobile app, but it has to be safe. And the cups of my baby. Yeah. The <laughs> uh, cups is for everyone. Uh, of course, it's for our, our Chesobe clients, but also for our non clients. That means if you have, uh, if you are clients, other banks, we don't care. It's up to you. Uh, you need, uh, you need just uh, only phone number and email, and you can re uh, register to our app. Our app is free. Uh, our clients need for registration 
ČSOB identity, we are smart team. Currently, we uh, offer something around 19 services, mainly in the area of mobility, shopping, and leisure. Um, on the screen, uh, screenshot, you can see uh, the badge, because uh, last week we uh, won a, a second place in Internet Effectiveness Award in category uh, Mobile Apps. The first uh, mobility service is parking. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's Prague, of course. Uh, <laughs> imagine uh, the situation. You are in hurry. You need to park uh, in a town. You need to fi find a vending machine. Uh, you need to put there your uh, plate number. You have to need change, you need to pay, you need to go uh, back to the uh, car with your parking ticket and put the parking uh, ticket behind the glass. But not with our application. <laughs> uh, you park in a zone, you open your uh, dockup say. Based on your current location, uh, you see which zone where you are. Uh, you put your plate number into the application, uh, choose your, uh, the long, how, uh, how long do you stay there and pay and you can go. No finding vending question. <laughs> so, uh, currently we have, uh, we provide this uh, service in more than 50 places in Czech Republic and uh, next, uh, month, uh, we want to add 10 more places. If you are not the drivers, uh, you can use our uh, other service. It's a uh, buy public transport tickets. We are uh, in a more than 10 cities in Czech Republic. And uh, you can choose uh, if you want to regular or reduce ticket and buy and go. Uh, both of these services, uh, sent you a notification if uh, you are if the tickets are uh, two or five uh, minutes uh, before uh, before they expired. Uh, parking you can easily extend it. Uh, tickets not to have to buy new one, of course. Uh, for drivers, we have uh, another service, and it's our motorway vignettes. Last year, we launched it with uh, only Czech Republic vignettes. Uh, this year, we added uh, six, <laughs> six more uh, states. And uh, this is the new one, Tunnel uh, La Droza in Livigno. And because in internet, you can find a lot of uh, e-shops, but you don't know which one is official. So, we search and uh, put their official official websites. For electric, uh, electric, uh, for electrical uh, enthusiasts, mm -hmm. we have uh, EV charges. This is clear map of Czech Republic uh, with the car charges. Um, our part, uh, another part is shopping. Uh, we launched uh, this year uh, market 24-7. It's not, you can, yeah, everyone knows you can buy mm -hmm. on internet uh, whenever, whatever you want. And um, another day, someone uh, said you uh, what you buy. This is something else. With market 24-7, you can uh, enter shops after the standard <coughs> evening hours. That means uh, you uh, generate QR code, uh, which you, which is using for the enter in the shops. In the shops, uh, the shop is uh, empty. You are there only the one. So for the authentication, we need uh, your bank identity because we have to know who is there and uh, what what you buying. <laughs> 
there are, uh, in those shops are of course cameras and security uh, and they watch you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, discounts and loyalty cards. Uh, I think Czechs love uh, discounts and uh, of course loyalty cards. It's one of the best uh, services uh, for us. And uh, I remember I always had in my purse a lot of plastic loyalty cards mm -hmm. and you have to find the right one in the shop so uh, yeah. you can uh, put your or scan your uh, cards into our our uh, application and you have everything in a uh, mobile phone. Uh, dozen of discounts from CSO by Svět for Pro Svět Odněn, uh, which is loyalty program of CSO by, uh, and it's for everyone. The life is not about travel, travel to work, to school, <coughs> from work to home, or uh, shopping groceries or uh, shopping clothes. It's about free time. And for free time, uh, we have for you more than 500 uh, inspiration for unusual trips in one place. You can choose where do you want. It's around Czech Republic and uh, borders too. I think something in Hungary too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. uh. The newest, uh, the newest service, uh, it's called uh, Foodies <laughs> because Czech love food, loves foodies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's not uh, just about uh, about places, but it's about events. It's about uh, markets too. And we don't have uh, one list where every event in Czech Republic are. So we try, uh, and uh, this year we have uh, something around 100, uh, 100 foodies in our app. If you're on the uh, way to, I think, work, but not with uh, with your car, and you have a time. You can uh, read uh, some articles from uh, uh, iSport, E Patna, uh, E Fifteen, Blask, and uh, uh, Iroflex, and we uh, have premium uh, articles for you uh, for free too. If you are in car, you can. Uh, heard our podcast, no. Chesobe podcast, because Chesobe Bank uh, offers many interesting podcasts. Uh, and uh, we have one uh, out of Chesobe Bankast, uh, which is run by Bankovnictví magazine. For our Chesobe clients, we offer something uh, more. Uh, Overview is uh, because as our clients, we know something about you, of course. Uh, so we uh, show you your uh, payment cards and your tra transaction with payment cards. It's only for a quick view. You can change nothing, but it's just a quick view. Well, how is your balances or if it's uh, your weekly lim uh, limit, it's okay. Uh, our, if our client has uh, annual insurance for any payment card, he can use uh, Natsuste in English on the road. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the service allows for 1.5% uh, uh, cashback for each for, uh, for in pain, for my payment, uh, and the possibility to withdraw uh, about without fee. This is uh, how much users we have in uh, at the end uh, last year, at the end 2022, uh, we had uh, 110,000 users. And today, mm -hmm. today, uh, yeah, I'm on a check it. Uh, we don't have 226, but more than 227. And mm -hmm. 20, uh, 27,000 uh, users. Mm -hmm. So this year we have more than 100,000 
uh, new uh, users for our application. Uh, but one, uh, one factor is not very good for me uh, in my uh, personal, for me personal, because only 30% of our uh, users are females. So, look up, say, look up, say, you can uh, download this uh, for iPhone. And, uh, thank you. And, uh, for Android. and uh, thank you very much. Of course. How do you know it's only 30% because I just downloaded it. And yes. Sure they didn't ask me. Like, yes, yes, yes. It's uh, based on our, our Chesso back clients. And uh, uh, 60, six, uh, yeah, 60 percent of our users are our clients. So <laughs> you need to. Uh, yes, this is amazing. We have just uh, logged in, and I'm the client, and I do you know about this amazing <laughs> option. <laughs> and I'm really excited for it. I love Thank the you. idea that you say it's actually driving this aggregation and simplification because now we are really overloaded with all kinds of applications and yes. this application and yes this card and I just felt fed up with it <laughs> ignoring most of the applications. So I really love this idea. Let's totally put it together and make our digital life easier because this conversation also comes to get this uh, selective uh, you know, decision making because there's so much information mm -hmm. options possible and it will help to make our life easier. So this is amazing and now I like to just pay them more. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much because you just described our goal. <laughs> for this application. May I have one question as well? Which part of the application is the most popular? You know? Yeah, I know. The most popular are uh, uh parking tickets, uh public transport tickets mm -hmm. and uh foodies we have foodies three four months in our app and it's uh very popular also. <laughs> <laughs> and how many people is working on uh, putting the information into the yeah uh, we have uh, we uh we have to buy this content yes. so uh so this just you no 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 uh i i i have a uh, I work with my three other colleagues, but uh, we don't make the content. We yes, just make uh, the yeah. service and the front end uh, and uh, uh, the back end uh, or the application involve our uh, colleagues from Etnetera. Etnetera. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, no. I'm sorry, uh, you mentioned you are the client of CSOB, so also the Beyond Bending is getting more and more inattention. So we have many applications, smart app, you know, if you have it, yes. So we are going, or we are currently adding the functions from the in there because all of the things that have been over as useful, we are going to put also in our main app. So at least we will get through the main app into the Ducapse in the first stage and maybe in the future also to have these most used yes. functions directly. Right now in the smart you can find uh, parking and uh, public transport ticket and Kate also can uh, help you with uh, these two uh, services. <laughs> Uh, no, I love it. I <laughs> My question is: a lot of the ads that are for free, you get a lot of uh, advertisement in it. Yes. So I'm hoping if this is your like app that you don't really don't want to advertise anyone with your product, is that how it's going to be? I'm not going to be flooded with the you know go there buy this and the special code or <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, th this app is free and. Uh, what I know, uh, still uh, still be free. <laughs> oh, well, I understood that the thirty percent of women from your clients are users. I know. So what's the structure of your client in general? Well, if you, you have like fifty percent of women and fifty percent of men who use banking or very or good question. Thank you very much. But I, 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 I don't know. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, 
if you are interested, we can we can yes. find out. No, no, sure. it, it's just uh, my idea is uh, this person page just copy mm -hmm. the person page yeah. of yeah. the overall structure of your clients. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, know, I don't know exact number for CSOB, but I ask in banking in general, bank application, and it's 48 percent of women and 52 men in, in average. So it will be probably very similar to this. So and me as a client, <laughs> I don't have this app as well, so I have to improve. I will check it. Uh, Afternoon. Yes. <laughs> many, many. <Yes>. Years. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. And we have another speaker about another applications from the Czech Republic. And how our, our next speaker is Zuzana Hola. She is head of corporate communication and sustainability at Vodafone Czech Republic. And she is also director of Vodafone Foundation in the Czech Republic. And Vodafone is supporting many applications, especially one which is called Zatanka. Uh, uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for the nice introduction. And as you've heard, I'm working at Vodafone here in the Czech Republic and responsible for the corporate communication and especially sustainable business. And I'm really honored to be also responsible for the Vodafone Foundation activities here at the Czech Republic. And it's a little bit different than my uh, previous speaker. Uh, it's not our own product, this application. Uh, maybe we will have the opportunity in the panel discussion afterwards to talk also about our own uh, application we are, we are uh, actually running and developing at the foundation. Uh, but this is actually more important for everybody, this application. It has been seven, it has been uh, actually seven years since we joined to a small startup called Zahranka, Aplikace Zahranka. Uh, it's an application uh, uh, which was in our um, accelerating startup program, which is called Laboratoř Nadace Vodafone, the uh, Vodafone Foundation Lab, where we are accelerating technology or technical uh, inspirations or ideas with social impact, with positive social impact. And this is one of the famous uh, projects uh, which uh, were there actually. Now we are partially two teams, partially one team. We are supporting them not only financially, but also we are one team in the communication and the promoting. And what uh, we uh, have achieved recently, we won a, a challenge fund, which was a competition, the Global Foundation uh, uh, of Vodafone, and we can expand in other countries and we got the fundings from the Global Foundation, which is great. And we are just now uh, struggling <laughs> and trying to expand the application. Uh, so, uh, if there is one app uh, my family has, uh, from my 12 years old daughter to my 78 years old parents, it's Zahranka. Mm -hmm. And uh, when uh, I think about it, uh, if there is only one app in our world, uh, which we should have, so I would recommend Zahranka, mm -hmm. because it can save your life, it can save my life, it can save anybody's life. And when I was thinking about the presentation today, I was close to the idea, that's it actually. <laughs> <laughs> I uh, could only uh, the call to action actually just download it. <laughs> but don't worry. Uh, even uh, when we have more than 2 million users in the Czech Republic, there are still 8 million uh, people remaining who just could uh, take a profit or benefits of, of, uh, the, of the application. So what is it actually? Uh, Zahranka is an app uh, which you can use um, actually in an emergency case uh, to call the rescue and emergency service in the Czech Republic, just any service. Uh, and uh, it is regardless uh, what situation you are in and regardless you don't know where you are. This is actually it, uh, because the emergency service, uh, they can see you, 
they can see where you are and they can uh, uh, they can hear you in the first moment uh, they can locate you and then even can see you if you activate the video call uh, feature of the application so how does it work and what is it based and uh, who is involved it's really an app where you can call uh, help uh, with uh, activating one button. You don't need to do anything else. Just put, just click on one button. Is it click on the screen? Yeah. Yeah. Touch. Yeah. Touch. <laughs> Touch. Um, and that's it. The dispatcher connects you to the closest crew uh, uh, in the emergency and rescue service. Uh, and as I said, they can see everything, what you also set up in your own profile in the application. And uh, they can see where you are, as I said, they can even see what happened. They can guide you uh, uh, so that you can, so that you stay safe until they arrive. Uh, and as I said, when you activate this uh, video call profile also, they can see the situation directly there and they, they already can navigate you how to help, help, what you should do, if you should, should stay and so on. And they always can, can tell you, we are there, we are behind the corner, just stay and so on. Even if you are in a deep forest where yeah, you just don't know the street. And to be honest, if something happens here, I just don't know the name of the street. So it's the actually the biggest difficulty when you call an emergency service so that's it but don't uh, and who is involved uh, the important thing is it's not one of million applications or dozens of applications because it is uh, it has an interface to all emergency services in the Czech Republic uh, uh, including the mountains rescue services including the water rescue services etc etc and all these services not only support the interface and the use of the application, but they proactively use it and prefer, for example, for um, uh, public warnings uh, about weather. For, yesterday, I got a warning uh, information about the snow situation in Karlovy because I am from there, so I have activated the region Karlovy Vary. So that's it. How it is used uh, in general in the Czech Republic, but not talk about just don't talk about it, but. We can see how it works if we start the video. Yes, it's the most efficient way to get help and the touch of a button. Here, of course, the emergency services and immediately sends all information needed for a fast and effective rescue. In the city, the countryside, just about anywhere, the system connects people in need with the emergency rescue services and already has over 2 million users in four European countries. Featuring medical points of interest and first aid procedures, the app gives you a vast warning of public health dangers in the area. And now it provides the possibility of video transmission directly from the scene of the incident. NGSOS, a technology for life. <coughs> You could see also the logo of the Hungarian Foundation uh, <laughs> because uh, uh, we have an, uh, you can, uh, the Hungarian version with our colleagues uh, of Vodafone Foundation. And this is uh, uh, yeah. Element. I will find it. <laughs> I, have, I, think, I think I have a picture in the last slide. So maybe we can recognize or I will send it to you later. <laughs> It's Alet Matter. Yeah, Alet Matter. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> that, that's it. Uh, so uh, you could see uh, some personal information there, uh, and it's actually up to you. You could really uh, create your own profile, uh, uh, and you can set just any information there you think it might be of importance or interest in an, in any emergency case. And you even can uh, uh, put uh, uh, temporary information about your health or your treatment and so on. Uh, why? Because they just don't need to ask you. Uh, uh, they know it already. And uh, there are much more information behind that. It's not only your own information, your personal information, but also many technical information, like uh, uh, if there is an internet connection signal, if uh, how is your battery in the phone, if you are therefore able to launch the video call, and so on and so on. And uh, uh, one uh, information which uh, might seem uh, to be a little bit funny is the social insurance number. 
number. You could say it's an emergency situation or even when I got lost in the forest, why they need my insurance number. But I've experienced it this summer. My 12 year daughter was in her language school summer camp, uh, shot uh, with an arrow, uh, with an arrow into the leg. And the language school uh, uh, didn't use Zahranka app, but they just called the emergency in a standard way. And it took one hour until she got into the hospital with the narrow from here and in that length. And she was on Budiovetska mm -hmm. and the hospital is like five minutes mm -hmm. uh, to go there. And it took one hour. And the emergency service called me twice about her birthday and then about her insurance number. Uh, and after they filled in all the papers, they just went. It's horrible. I was there earlier than them, and I went from Stodulki. Uh, so <laughs> uh, uh, I know she wasn't at risk of uh, of death. In that situation, they maybe just don't want it. But anyway, what's it? So it is important when you just fill it in, in, in your profile. That's it. But uh, the other thing is, uh, what I actually is, uh, the other thing is that you really can also put uh, your trip in. So for example, because it, it cooperates with the mountain service, uh, there is, it's called like mountain tour logbook uh, in English. So you really can put uh, in your plan, where are you walking, which trip you want to, to do. And uh, the system is that if you don't arrive at a time, so they just wait half an hour, one hour, then they call you. If you don't answer, they call a friend you put in and afterwards they just go to uh, search you. Uh, and even if you call them on the trip so they can see what trip you have behind you so they can better imagine what happened, how exhausted you could be and so on and so on. So it's a really practical thing. So, uh, and I always used to say they can hear you. Yeah, uh, but it's uh, there are situations you just can't speak. Mm -hmm. uh, you you are speechless. It happens something really that you just aren't able to speak, or you are a person with specific needs. <coughs> so even for that situation, for the, for those persons, the app is actually accessible. Mm -hmm. And when we talk about mountains, don't worry. We know most mountains are at the border of our country, and there is a cross border for functionality. So it works even you cross the border on your trip. So you don't need to be worried now. I am in Germany, one meter, so it doesn't work. <laughs> so it works, <laughs> it works. So, and uh, what else? It's not only the calling, it's not only this emergency button. There is much more behind and it's uh, still developed uh, to uh, get more and more features. So of course you can find uh, all imaginable information about first aid uh, uh, procedures. Uh, there are, is an active directory with um, uh, medical contacts, uh, with opening hours, et cetera, et cetera, or these emergency medical points and so on. Uh, there is a uh, database of uh, uh, EADs uh, with navigation and so on. Uh, this mountain uh, trip uh, logbook is there and so on. And one important thing is I mentioned already are these emergency warnings and it's used not only in general for the Czech Republic uh, warnings from these emergency systems but it can also be used regionally for example recently uh, South Moravia region uh, started to use Zahranka for uh, public warnings or messaging for their citizens so this is uh, what we are working on now so uh, and when I talked uh, about cross-border functionalities, of course, it works in the Czech Republic. It works in uh, uh, Austria in the mountains because there is a collaboration with uh, the Red Cross. Uh, it works in, uh, in Slovakia because there is a collaboration with the mountain rescue uh, services of Slovakia. And there is a special uh, version of the application in Hungary. I hope the name is there. 
This is something we work on. Uh, it worked uh, through the cross uh, border functionalities. Uh, what we are now uh, starting is we are preparing a launch in uh, Bavaria with the Bavarian Red Cross. Uh, it should work, and uh, with uh, different companies, we are working on this cross border functionality. It means if there is an application like this, and they come to visit the Czech Republic, uh, they can use their application, but it works via Dachanka. So that's actually the plan, yeah. And the last thing is, yeah, just install it. <laughs> because as I said at the beginning, uh, you can save a life. Yeah, thank you. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Can I, yeah, sure, yeah. can I add family members into the app, like uh, kids, so that they see their security yeah, numbers? Yeah. Uh, in, in the profile, mm -hmm. you, can, you, you can just amend uh, any important information. Mm -hmm. But actually, my daughters, they got uh, their own phone when they were 10 mm -hmm. or 9, because we are a community. Uh, and the, the only one application they got mm -hmm. at that time was Zahramka, to be mm -hmm. honest. And my parents, they are uh, 78. And because at the foundation, we have a program, digital education of seniors. So of course they had to do this program. <laughs> so they got uh, a smartphone mm -hmm. uh, when they were uh, 76. Mm -hmm. And again, the first application was Zahramka. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Probably not this baby. Yeah, this baby. Yes. <laughs> you can edit it. You, you can edit it. And it's not uh, my idea of uh, regarding the kids was not uh, uh, they will have some accident, uh, uh, but they get lost. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's it. And you can also use it when you get lost. Yes, yes. It actually happens. because there is a GPS, uh, so they locate you. Uh, that's actually the difference uh, to when you call a standard uh, rescue system. Of course, it's a normal rescue system. The standard rescue uh, crew who come, but through this application, they can locate you. Even in the in the city, in the town, you just don't need to uh, tell them the street uh, because they just see you. So that's actually the biggest benefit and it was the the original idea of the app. Thank you very much. Thank you. I have personal experience <laughs> with this application as daughter of my friend was the biggest hero in an accident on the street because she was 14 year old user of the Zakanka mm. and she was able to call mm. every, and manage all the adult mm. people around <laughs> <laughs> using this app and telling them what to do and, and it was really helpful. But so for young kids or or uh, and, uh, and teenagers, it's really, really great application because they are used to work with it. Okay. Thank you very much once more. Can I have a question? Yeah. I have a question because my grandma has it and she's asking me every time, like, how do I know it will work in case I need it? Is there like a test button? Yes. Yes. Right? When, yeah. you, open, when, you, when you open the app, and it's a left corner uh, and there is a test. Mm -hmm. and, well, if she does a test, you just have to uh, uh, it. press it like three seconds. Mm -hmm. Because it's again, it's just misusing or accidental mm -hmm. using, so mm -hmm. you need three seconds. To and nothing's going to happen, it's just going to tell her I'm working. And... Yeah, there is a test function, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. if they call you back when they are already starting to go, <laughs> <laughs> it happened in, in, in this summer actually because we had Melana Masala, the actors, uh, in some debate of the found, uh, in the foundation, and we just uh, made her download the <laughs> yeah, and she called directly. <laughs> yeah, and they and they go, they went. <laughs> they went. So, so it works. <laughs> so, thank you very much once more. And now we are coming to the last point of our program, which will be discussion. So I would like to invite Susanna once more to the floor. And our other guests are, okay, Petra Kotuliakova. She is our Slovak guest. She's CEO of the Slovak NGO called IT. I <laughs> we in Czech understand it, it means you in IT also. It's not so nice like in Slovak or Czech language. 
she's deputy chair of the diversity charter working group of the council of european professional informatic societies in brussels yes. so she's <laughs> the best person to be here and our last guest is market Zinomanova. she's head of group digital in G csob so colleague of our presenter and she's responsible for the design and implementation in the area of retail digital channels and identity and she is working on the digitalization topic even in the, in the Czech Bank Association because she is vice president in, in these commission. So, welcome. Yeah, one more slide. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I would like to start with this job uh, information. We made a brief research in on information here, but we found out that uh, women at all uh, don't feel they have obstacles in using applications. 90% uh, said that using applications is okay with them and it's helpful. On the other side, uh, we can see that women are not using all this up in the same way as men, even if they are clients. What do you think is the main reason? And do you feel it the same way or do you feel that you are using the applications as men and other? Um, well, um, I think it's not about the way we are using, but maybe what applications we are using, because I cannot imagine my husband to use Rohrik, for instance, to, to order the food. So uh, my view on this is that uh, when you need to use the application, you do it the same way. Uh, whether you are a man or you are a woman, you just do it because you are kind of dependent on it. But it's the, the type of the applications we are using. So um, I think that when you are the uh, mother and you care about the children, then you probably use the applications connected to food, connected to some ordering of the, of the clothes, etc. Uh, while the man can use some some other, I actually don't know which ones, but uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't think that, <laughs> that it's um, uh, that the way or the frequency differ. Okay. Mm. I would say the same actually. It's a, it's not about the. Uh, way but it's about the reason why and what type yeah because in my neighbor all my friends uh they are using so many for example shopping applications and so on i can't imagine that a man is using them in that scope actually mm -hmm. yeah i think in general applications are done for us to make our life better and easier so it's uh, the question if we need to have the life easier, and I think yes. Uh, and the second question is uh, if we go actively for research to, for mm. some opportunities, how to make our life easier. So it's not a question of how many of women would use application, but if we are pushed to use it, and if we feel the necessity to use something, and in this second stage, which kind of application would be best for us? Mm. Yeah, I totally agree. Do you feel that this usage of application helps women or not only women, but maybe all the people to overcome some barriers in using technology at all? Because we know that these smartphones are widely spread in the population and people are using it not only in Europe, but in the whole world without connection, internet connection. A lot of people are using mobile phones. So probably that applications are a good way how to open the door into the IT and technology world? Well, I think that uh, there are definitely barriers uh, in, with using it older people, but also uh, for people that are somehow against using digital as such. But um, it's always about creating a need. When you create a need for something, then you are using it. And of course, the need can be created for different kinds of people in a different way. I always say when you create a need to put some clothes on you because it's just a fashion and you look like a bag, then it has to work in the digital as well. So for me, creating a need means that I have to keep my dynamic of my life and I'm not able to do it without digital. I'm not. Mm -hmm. 
I have to do the things on my way. When I go somewhere, I have to do it. So my need is just to keep my way of life. But it doesn't work for older people. Like they sit on the check post all day. You know, they, they don't need it to be passed or something. So you have to find a way that motivates them and find a need. And it can differ for, for people. So Zahranka can be a great way to, to motivate, mm-hmm. to use the digital. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you don't create a need that is connected with some, some kind of safety, we have the big problem to motivate old people to use the bomb- mobile banking, of course, because mm. there's a barrier connected with safety. Is that they're going to send my money? I'm going to send the money to different account, and I'm not going to take it back anytime. So, so you have to find the need to motivate people. Mm-hmm. Okay. One of the tasks of this project we are part today is create a list of useful applications and guide how to use it. So we can agree that these applications like Zakaranka Life Savings should be number one, or we can start with it and concentrate on the usage. What mm-hmm. else do you think it's uh, really uh, useful? Mm-hmm. And I would make a difference between uh, Europe, let's say, or Czech Republic, and what you mentioned, many women in the world and so on, because I, we have some examples from the Global Foundation. Uh, uh, so when I start this, this is the maybe faster part. Uh, for example, in Africa, the uh, Vodafone Foundation is developing and running uh, two apps actually there. One is M-Pesa and it's for banking. It's not banking, but this is mobile financial services. Mm-hmm. Uh, mostly for women and uh, now they have more than 50 million users there around Africa and this is really something which is, uh, which is emancipation of, uh, of women there because they have their own money mm-hmm. they do not have a bank account uh, but they have a system where just they can work with their money and, and so on and the other application uh, is for uh, uh, calling uh, help uh, for pregnant women. Uh, there is a database of volunteers actually who can drive them to the doctor and so on. Mm-hmm. And this is a really something which is tangible that you really can see safe lives, uh, safe lives. Uh, but this is a little bit uh, in terms of technologies in other world, I would say. And here in Czech Republic, I have the same. I need to be uh, fast. I even don't need a computer because I want to do it in my head, actually. And I have two kids and uh, we are the digi- digital family, actually, because I don't see them du- uh, during the day, but I know uh, that uh, they work with an application. I can see where they are. They can send me even a easy whatsapp message and so on or pictures and so on this is such an easy way to be with them even i'm not physically with them yeah and that's it actually it's very nice that the, the applications are here or the technology are here for breaking mm-hmm. some barriers because it allow us to be present everywhere to communicate in everyone and so on but on, on other side sometimes i had, had an idea that if you will check how many applications did you upload and how many of them do you use during the year. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, you will find that, wow, my phone is full of um, unused yeah, applications. Yeah, applications, for example. <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> that sometimes we are so overwhelmed that uh, I think our head is absolutely not clear to really see what is important for us and what is mm-hmm. useful for us, what we would like to follow. So, so before the uploading the next application, my advice is just uh, try to think how you will use it and what should be the goal you will follow, what this application should bring you, because it's definitely so many great applications done every day, mm-hmm. but it's up to us how we would like to use them and for which purpose, because, because later on we can really, wow, the technology is so nice. Uh, you can see uh, when traveling. So you download the app there for the commuting at the city and so on, and then, Oh, don't forget to uninstall them. Yeah. I was, I don't, two months ago, I was at Tivoli Park uh, in Copenhagen and I still get the announcements <laughs> because, yeah. I, and always when I get the announcement, I said, oh, uninstall the app. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's it. Yeah. But when you were uh, mentioning some kind of list of application, mm-hmm. it would be really useful. I think you have to find the life situations you have to solve and that everyone is solving. So definitely it's communication. When mm-hmm. you have WhatsApp or other communication, that is definitely something that can be used. When you need to do some regular shopping, grocery stuff, you need some kind of application. When you want to travel, there's a bunch of applications you can use starting with taxi drivers, mm-hmm. uh, continuing with booking. So this is another way how to look at it. Zahranka is the health, my personal type is definitely something that makes your life easier regarding the 
public administration mm. because all the stuff you have to do with yeah. all the documentation when I try or the schools with kids when you have to take personally the paper and take it from one school to another that's like a insane in the digital world but you have to really do it so uh my personal time is the the, the application that would help you with the mm. public administration this is why I was very much involved from the CSOB side in Bank ID because Bank ID really helps you with uh, getting into this portal of, uh, of citizen. I've never was there before I had my Bank ID because I didn't want to have another access. I didn't want to expect, didn't know what to expect. So this is probably some kind of list that I would have in my mind mm -hmm. when speaking about a useful application. Yeah. And I would uh, add maybe two other apps and they are actually from the, our foundation. The one is similar to Zahranka, uh, it's called Echo. And it's an application which was actually developed by police uh, in cooperation with us. And uh, this is actually opening the police database for missed kids. Uh, uh, and uh, you really get the notification a kid is missed uh, and it's in the uh, risk actually already. There are different levels. Uh, so there is the highest level uh, of missed kids in, in this risk. And uh, you can really see the picture, you can see the information, what it has on and so on. And uh, when you just see the kid and ask, is that you, you just press one button again and the police is informed and so on. So this is something you probably don't use it. Like, I hope I won't use Zahranka. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> this is the same. But honestly, I feel better when I have it. Because I feel if something is wrong, I could help. And I know if something is wrong with my kids, maybe somewhere is somebody who has this app too and who can contact uh, the police and so on. This is, this is uh, the other app. And then there are some apps they can help you in a specific situation or in a specific stage of your life. Uh, probably, you know, uh, we are running the application which is called Bright Sky and this is for helping victims of domestic violence in Hungary. It's too, yeah. Uh, and this is something really special. And there we have really uh, the statistics that the people, they are using it uh, uh, approximately or in average uh, three months. They got the information what they needed or they solved the problem or they got the information how to solve the problem uh, and then they uninstalled it. Mm -hmm. It's interesting how uh, we are still looking for some feeling of security. Mm. If, if, if to remind all the all these applications that we need to be protected in some mm. way and we are still looking for where we can find this protection and it's great that uh, we can really have such uh, different applications for give us this this feeling because often what is not really good i think we lost this feeling inside of society inside mm -hmm. of families sometimes we do have these struggles so yeah if, if we can rely to the technology part this is really the positive side of all the use of technology mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, but what, what is also important when we are speaking about applications and we, we discussed before how, that maybe we can underline some applications helping us to rise and to learn new, new thing and so on. There is a lot of different application, applications where we can learn languages and, and so on, technology. But what is interesting, I think that the main problem is uh, learn how to learn. I don't know if you uh, experienced, for example, during the last period, did you try to read, I don't know, 10 pages of professional text or be focused during one hour on, <laughs> on some topic? And this is a, the problem we will face in society because once we finish the university, we graduate, we, we a little bit push all the education stuff apart mm -hmm. because we are sure that it's it's end. And now it's very hard to return back to the track and be able to learn the new skills and so on. So application is great that we do have them. But uh, we need to learn. We need to know how to learn, how to use the application, mm -hmm. or use them. That's it. That, that's right. We have to always learn. Uh, we just uh, and this may be the difference uh, 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 now that we really uh, we we are we are never done with the education. So and this is important. Uh, for women especially, that uh, it's not uh, it's not done with the university mm. years ago. Uh, we have to develop ourselves. And with technology, it's maybe easier, but the first step is to learn how to use technology to make our lives easier. And then it's, it's easier to yeah, develop I, ourselves. I had a fresh experience with my son yesterday. He's 12 years old, and he had to read a long text uh, from his philosophy lesson. Mm. And 
I was reading something and in three minutes I heard that he's not reading. He put it to some application and the application was reading the text for him. And he said, mom, sorry, I am not able to read it. I'm able to listen and make notes. So it was probably a clever way how to do it, but I'm not sure it was good <laughs> for his brain development, but it's probably the way how we will do our education in, in the future. And maybe it will be easier for us and especially for us older people. Maybe yeah. we have to accept this change uh, because uh, I have similar experience, not with reading, but with writing this, uh, what is it, book? Uh, it's it the last last <laughs> yeah. 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 And it's a, such a pain for my younger daughter. I just have never imagined it before uh because she's a more for mass uh from her type of personality and it's a really a physical pain and i think so what there is an ai so she doesn't need it for her life so <laughs> i have a question the question of concentration because there are several studies uh already made on white spectrum of, of concentration that digital media in general mm -hmm. support very uh quick concentration because you are used to read very but much quicker than normal text. So it's, it's just a question if you want to support uh, the kids to be less concentrated, then and then they will find out that they are not able to read some I wouldn't say they are text or not longer but average, average length of text. So it's just a question into discussion. Uh, I don't yeah, know, I, yeah. I that, that's answer, that's what I just mentioned it's maybe a question of acceptance uh, that uh, the habits change uh, and of course we think it's the only the only one right uh, thing is that we concentrate we can focus on read on long texts we can write and so on but maybe not maybe these times are gone I don't know <laughs> maybe it's just about, it's a question into the discussion yeah. too <laughs> it's about whether you want to what you have to take out from the digitalization mm -hmm. if you really want to uh you know commit to it a hundred percent and accept everything that is given you but also taken from you or you want to keep some level of knowledge ability etc it's like starting to use gps many people from from the start didn't want to use gps because they said it makes me dumb i i remember all the plans in my head you know and and basically basically it took some time before people learned that maybe with gps it's so easier so much easier that they just don't want to learn the plans but with the reading etc i think there are some uh some ideas also about this how to work with this and uh my personal experience is now uh based on some um, courses etc that we are learning back how to focus how to be uh, all those mindfulness uh exercises etc and uh that's uh, almost absurd that i have the application how to uh focus more how to breathe better <laughs> <laughs> how actually uh, like, like learn back what applications get, uh, took me took from me so um i think there should, everyone has to have some kind of barrier and i don't have to push my kids to read but actually i always recommend them more a book than than the, the, the and and the reading diary or tenaski <laughs> uh, at least to try because it gives you some ability That's what I before using the, the, the chat GPT. But also, I don't want my kids to ignore uh, GPT, GPT, chat GPT at all. You know? So it's uh, about finding the, the, the balance, mm. probably. But, but if I may add, you write a very good question because it, it was proven that the, this era of digital when everything is online and uh, a lot of countries starts to use the, the tablets and uh, notebooks for uh, during the education, it, it was proven that the, the attention span is uh, very short and uh, I think the last studies from Finland or Norway, I'm not sure now, uh, they proved that the, the level of education of uh, kids is really dropping down significantly. Mm -hmm. So they are mm -hmm. back to use to the paper documents and paper books. And they are now really shocked that why we really launch all the tablets education because we could see that it's really going in the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sorry, you're the yeah, I have one comment actually that uh, yes, we are losing our focus. Uh, on one hand, with the receiving children, but on the other hand, this gives us so much uh, power and uh, go back to be, I would say, human in a way. For example,
example, now I, I've read uh, University of Economics, one faculty is uh, cancelling the traditional bachelor thesis. Mm -hmm. And we know it for ages that this theoretical work, works, uh, takes a lot of time of the students and not always really useful for life, we, many of us went through it. And with the chat GPT, they actually are not able, the professors, to follow if it was done by the students or if it was, if, if it's this generative AI. So, and the solution is that the faculty is introducing uh, that the students should either start their own business or go for some international um, project or and write uh, their experience. So actually this uh, going more practical and st stop losing time, uh, but yes, we need to be able to read long text and write. But on the other hand, sometimes being too theoretical, while this can be done by AI, and we can focus on our creativity, on really doing things, I think it's a great to shape our kids this way, that uh, we are not robots. <laughs> there is something better instead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I definitely agree that the time will be really challenging and it's on every of us how to use these applications and how to approach. Uh, on the other side, education is extremely important because we should show younger people or women or senior people how to do it and how to use and bring the best examples. If you should name one application which is not so common, it means no banking, no communication, which is really important for you. Uh, I think it's very common, but I like it a lot. It's map it is it. You have a great <laughs> and I use it everywhere. Uh, I know if you if you know that it, it's also the Czech one, the fair potravina, that you can mm -hmm. check uh, uh, what is inside your uh, your food, yes. and this is also mm -hmm. the the great tool. And uh, I admire a lot Goodreads, and uh, I think it's also the common but Goodreads for tracking what you are reading, and I can return back what was my reading list mm -hmm. of, of, the, of the year. And I like it a lot because I'm a very fun mm -hmm. reader. So, and, mm -hmm. but there are no this this is not something niche that I can. Mm -hmm. Zafranka. No, I'm just thinking it's maybe, yeah, I'm using, for example, I like uh, Pet or Litačka here in Prague, especially big, uh, for uh, for the tickets, for the tram or metro. Uh, you can also park there already now and so on. I used to have different parks and I really appreciate if you put more and more towns into the system and I download it too even though I'm not a client of Chelsea but, but anyway because what I really hate is I come into the different town uh, yesterday I was in Usti nad Labem and they have a different system I don't want to have 10 applications and to check if this <laughs> town is in that or in that application so it would really make my life easier mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> then great <laughs> Uh, so, but th these are more applications for my life, and it's it's not an application what I am using. Uh, it's sorry for that. It's Insta Stories uh, with a specific in a specific area. I am a gymnastics instructor. I have a small small gym club, and I always uh, uh, see for inspiration because I'm the only one trainer there and it's just limited. Uh, it's so limiting for me. And really it helps me so much that I can see short videos, short, short tutorials and so on. So this is one of the great benefits of technologies. I know it's a communication, it's a self-presentation somehow of the people, but it really helps me. Yeah, but application, I don't know. I will remember later. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I have some, some application and all, almost no one knows mm. but um, I'm traveling a lot so uh, for me things like booking mm. or, or or even the the, the taxi like uber that mm. the fact that I just put the, the three times something in it it pays automatically through my card I can do through the booking everything in two days I am somewhere else and it mm. doesn't cost me some time I really speed it up the process of arranging our vacation to almost zero by that. Mm -hmm. And it has some kind of guarantee. I, mm. I'm glad that it has some kind of guarantee. But I have to also uh, say, and it's not like a, um, a like a advertisement, but I'm also kind of dependent on the banking application. 
It's it, the fact that I don't have to spend the time in the evening with my internet or mm -hmm. going to the branch or something. Mm -hmm. uh, the fact that I can do it on my way to the tram station. I can arrange all the time for the kids, for, for some yeah, regular. Exactly. So, so this is really helping my life. This is actually a must-have application yes. for me because I have a both kids, both kids accounts under my account and it's just so easy and interesting. But uh, I remember actually uh, recently I... Uh, learned a new application which is great for traveling and this is uh, uh, luggage storage uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, that uh, there is really an app it's called outbound or something like that or bounce uh, and there are different cities in europe and you really uh, again uh, it's your location and it uh, gives you many possibilities where you can storage your luggage when you just have half a day uh, free time uh, this is perfect mm -hmm. Yeah, this is perfect. And and the one you have mentioned that you have the uh, also the account of your kids mm -hmm. on the application. Mm -hmm. One uh, reminder: once your kid will reach eighteen years old, from one day to another, you will not see. It <laughs> 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 suddenly <it> disappear. <laughs> so uh, this was interesting for me. I didn't know. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I made a great experience. Uh, it was not just so bad, but uh, two years ago I uh, created the first kids account. Uh, uh, under my account, uh, it was Air Bank, and the result was that my daughter had to approve my payments, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. which was funny. <laughs> yeah. So she was the master of all accounts in the family. Yeah. Then. <laughs> Sometimes mistakes can happen. Yes. It was quite interesting in our research that uh, uh, many people mentioned the uh, mental health application mm -hmm. as mm -hmm. important, as something really helpful. I think it's probably new direction in which we will use the application. And I have a quite recent experience with my mom. My mom is 85 years old and she spent five weeks in Spain. Mm -hmm. And she was super happy because she was able to do everything ourselves uh, on the phone, book the air mm -hmm. tickets or the special assistants on the airport to drive mm -hmm. her to the plane or the, the Uber then book the accommodation even or the, the food in the, mm. the place. So I think for her, because she is a walking woman, it was really, really big help. Mm -hmm. So mm. I think it's not only for us, it, but it, I hope it will be for us in the next 30 years as mm. well. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. And any questions or comments? I would love to know what are your favorite applications. <laughs> 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 okay, actually, at this moment, I love Duolingo. <laughs> because I am competing with my son. He, he started to study uh, French. Uh, and, he says, and it was the only way how to make him to move forward. And But at this moment, I am dependent on it. So if I have got it yesterday at a party at 11 o'clock in the evening, I got the notification that I didn't do my lesson. So I said, sorry, ladies. <laughs> So I, I love this. Uh, this is what I'm using. I really love Slack as, as a communication mm -hmm. application because I use it in the startup world for many projects. Mm -hmm. And it's very good for structured communication. You, you can use it with big group of people mm -hmm. for different topics, mm -hmm. which is definitely, <laughs> definitely big help. And what else? Okay. A mental health application? No. <laughs> no. No, I don't have any. But of course, banking, sure. Mm -hmm. And I love a lot of podcast applications. Mm -hmm. I'm using mm -hmm. because I love to listen to podcasts if I'm driving or even in the evening when I, I have to fall asleep. It's the best way how to fall asleep to listen to a podcast for me. Mm -hmm. So in this case, it's not a good podcast when you are able to fall asleep. <laughs> <laughs> it's a quiet podcast. So, do you have any interesting tips for, yeah. for not such common applications? Mm -hmm. Share with us. Or do you really use some mental health applications or yeah. relaxing I applications? Have one yes. Called yes. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's really good. Actually. This is good. If you, if you, if 
these struggles of any kind of depression or panic mm -hmm. attacks and anything actually mm -hmm. you can find really nice exercises how to calm you down or calm yourself down and stuff like that i actually uh i discovered it really like coincidentally <laughs> i didn't know about it yeah. I, I, yeah. I think it just kind of started mm -hmm. uh, it still is yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there is a great application uh for example for young people uh, and for financial education it's called mekrachni Mm -hmm. This is perfect. It's done by students uh, or IGNOS. This is for uh, fears of young people uh, uh, about AI. Yeah, so there are many really useful applications nobody knows about, uh, but mm -hmm. but it's not for mainstream, I would say. Yeah. I personally I downloaded the Wim Hof breathing application. <laughs> and I went to the course of Wim Hof breathing. I read the whole book about the breathing, mm -hmm. uh, and it uh, also like um like Duolingo. It's kind of bullying you. you know, it says, I'm dependent. I have to finish it. That's what my son always says. I'm bullied bullied by by the Duolingo. I have to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, I had the same feeling that I have to do the, the exercises, mm -hmm. but uh, it makes you do that. So. Uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can recommend also. In, in summer, I have I had a fitness challenge mm -hmm. that the app installed by my daughters. Uh, yeah, at the beginning it was perfect. I was pushed, but after some time it didn't help anymore. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah. Any other tips? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a good point. We should definitely put it to our list. Mm -hmm. We have a shared family calendar, uh, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, plus my husband and the baby sister. So we all share all the programs. So mm -hmm. you can see where everyone should be in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. Or if they have any one special program that we need to prepare for before uh, the day before, if anything, we could decrease or anything like that. So that helps uh, them. Mm. This is great. I'm thinking about it. Exactly. I have it on my to do <laughs> because, list <laughs> because it's so uh, crazy. Most common so, question is I didn't know it. <laughs> so, yeah, but it's yeah, very messed in the calendar. Yeah, so, if you know that something is coming up, you can, of course, announce it mm. and put it in the calendar mm. and also set alarms so everyone gets an alarm that, okay, mm. two days from now, you should be mm. Yeah, school apps are helpful. Another way, because I couldn't imagine how to manage all the school's yes. responsibilities without the school app. And for difficulties with learning in schools, the application of Chelka is perfect. Uh, uh, they started uh, as a, an application for uh, children with uh, reading difficulties, but now all the program of uh, primary school is there, and this is, this is good too. Okay, mm -hmm. so useful tips. Thank you very much, ladies, for Thank you. spending time with us and Thank sharing you your experience. Thank you all for coming. Thank you all for watching us and hope to see you again in our business professional women events or on our Equal Pay Day conference or other possibilities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.